tonight it's not rapid uh but it is actually my boss it's it's uh, daniel Polly, cheesehead logic how's it going man wow what what, what what am i doing here greetings ladies and gentlemen on on the on the post celebration of a super bowl sunday what are we doing right now with our lives yeah you call we're it watching, we're, yeah, we're, we're, we're watching league of legends my goodness guys good monday morning to everybody or, or for me at least it feels like a monday morning <laughs> i'm still trying to wake up i feel like from a very long sunday it's week four, Josh. It we is. have two League of Legends matches today, and I think our first one's probably the more intriguing one of the day. It's Georgia Southern versus Georgia State. Uh, In-state rivalry that's not too old, but there's been a lot of hatred going back and forth between these teams uh, in the past recent couple of years. Obviously, being in Georgia, great time to be there right now after an Atlanta <laughs> loss last night. It was so um, sad. Oh, my God. Like, They'll have to explain to me how how did that feel like after after Green Bay lost a couple of weeks ago I completely checked out emotionally so uh, how did yeah. it feel to be invested for a little bit longer so okay so fun fact about everyone in this match and b except for pa uh, Polly here everyone in this in this game is from Atlanta <laughs> the the players they're all from Georgia Georgia Southern then Georgia State I'm from Atlanta I'm not from Atlanta I live in Atlanta though but the more important fact is that I do not like the Patriots so. <laughs> I was really rooting for the for the Falcons, and it was a, an emotional roller coaster that uh, didn't really have too many ups and downs. Had one giant up, and then a, a plunge down through the earth into the depths of hell as we lost a 20, 28 and three lead. So that was great. It was a, uh, it was I don't know. I felt like drinking a little bit afterward, but my friends, my, I want to say my friends, my neighbors, because uh, I live in a big uh, uh, high rise apartment building. There was a lot of angry doors slamming out in the lobby, and I live in kind of a ghetto area to where they're not afraid to do that. So I didn't take my dog out until 3 in the morning just because I didn't want to uh, ruffle anyone's feathers or anything like that um, or just, just, just expose myself to the hatred that was outside. Because not only was it just in my building, I could hear just people really annoyed outside the building. And I was on talking about that. There is actually pick and ban phases going on. So uh, there are. There yeah, are, this, yeah. This is Daniel with me. He is actually a Dota and StarCraft guy. So I'm gonna educate him a little bit as, as much. We're, as we're, we're, gonna be, we're, we're actually don't worry. Hey, we're we're getting into law a little bit more. We're yeah. starting to get a little well adjusted. We do see the state with the Rengar rise and Leeson ban. Uh, I, obviously, I think Rise is a decent band. I, I feel like every broadcast and every stream I've been to, like everybody's been complaining about him, like being semi, just generally, like on a fundamental level, kind of feeling strong and like broken, maybe. He has a very but, powerful mid to late game. Very powerful. Yeah, it's, he, he's really fun to fun to <laughs> fun to watch if he gets out of yeah. control. But on the other side, uh, on Southern Syndra, uh, Fiora, and looks like an Oriana 
ban as well. Didn't you want the Oriana pick like last time around? You wanted to make some like memes last time around. I, I did want to actually make a because that was before the Super Bowl. I, it was Saturday actually. I wanted to make a, a Matt Ryan and Julio Jones reference with the ball carrying mechanics, but there was no Oriana picked, and now it would just be sad. And I'm not going to make any Tom Brady or any. I don't even remember that that guy with the with the mustache that like carried got caught that in like impossibly catchable ball. Anyways. Oh, 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 Edelman? Yeah, uh, no, that, that was, yeah, that was dope. Yeah, Edelman, whatever his name is. Yeah, that was ridiculous. Dope. Let's talk, take a look at something more positive on a note here. Um, so Georgia State, they've picked up Camille, which Camille is actually a huge band right now in League of Legends. Uh, solo queue and in collegiate play. Haven't seen Camille get through yet. This is going to be my, I believe, my first cast on a Camille for uh, the season. So this is going to be interesting. Of course, Varus and Zyra in the bot lane. Varus has been showing up huge in the bot lane as well. Uh, big utility. Uh, utility uh, ADC. Not a huge power. Not a, not a big powerhouse like you would expect like a um, like a Jin or um, say a Lucian. But utility has an ultimate that stun like, no, doesn't stun. It roots everybody. Can farm from far back can stay relatively safe is immobile though who's going to, he's going against a Kha'Zix that will be uh, pretty telling if the Kha'Zix can start uh, jump onto the Varus but does have a little bit of protection with the uh, with the Zyra Strangle Thorns and Grasping Roots and you do have Ari in the mid lane for the assassination there's a lot of power coming out from Georgia State right now and they also locked in the Rek'Sai so they have a little bit of a front line but that's about all they have unless Camille can get going to where uh, she could just kill anybody before uh, she ends up dying. But on the other side, though, Georgia Southern, Corky Kha'Zix, and then uh, in the bot lane, we got the Malzahar and Ash with a Ramus hovered over right now. That would be a, I guess, a top lane Ramus, which we don't see too often, Polly. I don't know. I don't know how. Uh, so I'm gonna, how, how, oh, okay. There we go. He picked out of it. I'm, I'm going to be slightly cautious handing off to you because uh, I'm actually still wondering, like, how much League of Legends do you, do you, are you familiar with? Well, let's start with the basics. Okay. Uh, I think we're still level twenty only in game <laughs> after like after after like four long years. Just like like th th like it was like this past month. I, I came in like the rock man. The entrance came through. I was like, the rock has finally come back, and it's just like you're only level nineteen. I'm like, damn it. I'm like, I, I gotta play more. I gotta play more. So I'm trying to get a few more games under my belt to get a little bit of a better feel. But obviously, with you all and uh, everything else is going on, right. definitely a little bit more intriguing to watch. Uh, we'll have a lot of talking points, obviously, on matchup and lanes here in a moment. But as we're getting loaded in, guys, want to give a big shout out to our sponsors, Band Gaming, the social app. If you guys are having a hard time communicating. Sometimes, as you see, like tonight, we, we're missing a caster. Sometimes you have a hard time communicating. It's important to have great. <laughs> it's important to have great communication uh, between everybody. So, band can help you there. It has video calling, it has regular calling, group encounter apps, everything that you guys need, all the social functions possible to get very organized and get your communication in place. Ga uh, band gaming made for gamers uh, by gamers. So, uh, as well as also we have ASUS. They are back on board, baby, this year. Uh, I have awesome gear from them, from monitors to my GL752 to all the other awesome things that they create from <laughs> graphics cards to, you know, peripherals to e everything, man. Like, I love ASUS. I love what they do. Even uh, my favorite moment with them and remembering all the way back is uh, some of their even VR optimized gear. If you remember that from uh, DreamHack Austin last year. Yeah. Really, really, really dope stuff, and uh, we're obviously uh, glad to have them on board. And then, of course, Twitch. What is up, Twitch? Uh, if you guys are watching on stream, this is obviously Twitch, but they are all over the place supporting Collegian gamers uh, from here uh, to the end of the world, basically, at this point in time, and really cool programs that are going to be coming out soon, especially for the collegiate community, so keep an eye on that. I have some uh, whispers that something really cool for the college uh, side is coming out here pretty soon. And as a reminder, guys, if you guys are personal streamers yourself uh, and you guys are also a CSL player, make sure to link your Twitch profile to your CSL profile. That way, after the broadcast, if we see you guys streaming, we can host you so you can grow, we can grow, make the whole community grow. It's a, it's a mutual effort. It's a mutual beneficial effort, I think. Uh, that's kind of cool opportunity to get you guys some more views, some a uh, little bit more exposure. You know, yeah. pretty fun. Stuff. Yeah. All right, that was beautiful. You don't know much about League of Legends, but you can plug the hell out of some sponsors. So that's awesome. 
<laughs> right. So, uh, anytime, man. Anytime. That's, yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. I'm here for. <laughs> no problem. No, no. I'm, I'm going to be doing most of the League of Legends uh, broadcasting here. So, yeah, get in where you fit in, boo. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to throw it over to a quick commercial break. But in about a little over a minute, we're going to be on the rift with Georgia Southern versus Georgia State. Best of three, game number one. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Ben, Sam, and Ken are on separate journeys to defeat the menacing vile dragon. But let's just say luck isn't on their side. If only there was a way for them to find each other and band together. Well, that's why there's Band. It's a mobile app that allows people to come together using common interests. With Band, you can find fellow gamers, chat, schedule gaming sessions, and conduct polls. Stage epic battles with friends while sharing videos and photos along the way. So try Band today. Band. Be together. Fekas Quest. I am here with Daniel Cheesehead Logic Polly. Uh, Rapid is away for right now. We'll see what uh, see if he comes back later on in the broadcast. But I'm very anxious to be casting with you because we we're talking about if you're just joining us, Daniel. He doesn't really know too much about um, about League of Legends. He is a Dota guy. He is a StarCraft guy. He is a League of Legends sympathizer. You're, 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 you're just asking like the whole like Twitch chat to like just dog pile on. <laughs> he's, a, he's, a, he's a Dota guy. Get, he's get him, also boys. not from Atlanta, which I'm assuming everyone watching is gonna be from Atlanta too. Yeah, right. <laughs> both but of hey, teams are from Georgia. Well, it's, well, well, it's interesting. Um, it's actually when I was talking about kind of like the renew, uh, kind of a, a little bit of a new rivalry. It was a officially officially started in like 2015 between these two universities yeah. but um i feel like it just general like play goes back a little bit further than that but now uh, some of like their football programs and stuff like that have gotten a little bit bigger um they they've kind of figured out a way to get renew it and it's really nice because uh, it's, it's hard to fit like anybody else in there because i think in georgia you have basically georgia and georgia tech but other than that, there wasn't anything really big and notable outside of that, as far as I can remember. But yeah, talk, talk about the lanes right now. What, what kind of matchups are we seeing here right now? All right, so in the bot lane, we do see Varus and Zyra are relatively, they're not super aggressive. Varus is really not that aggressive. Varus is more, let's hit level six, wait for a game, and then uh, we're going to just do as much damage from far as way as possible because I am an immobile champion, but I do a lot of damage with my piercing arrow. So. That's kind of countered with the, um, with the Zyra here, who, as you can see, is pretty offensive, does a lot of aggression. We're going to see how that one pans out, because on the opposite side of that, you have a lot of aggression, a big level 6 from Demon Cookie and Young Kev. The Malzahar and the Ash, Enchanted Crystal Arrow, and Nether Grass combo is very vicious, but the top one is a little bit of aggression. And of course, the camera pans down to the bot side, but you're seeing Young Kev throw out those Void Links, uh, yeah, those Void Links, which... They're, they're extremely annoying to deal with because they get right in your face and they there's about three of them that spawn at a time and you know more later on. They get more powerful, of course, as the uh, level up the skill. But they can do a huge amount of damage almost instantly and it's it's uh, really good against someone like Sinestro who's piercing arrow. It does less damage the more enemies it goes, the more uh, uh, targets it goes through. So if you're 
just completely like young kev right now and there's nothing blocking him from taking a piercing arrow but he can instantly reduce that damage by throwing down some void damage. it's a little thing but hold on in the top lane bricks this might be bitten off more he can chew he just gets a flash out uh, that was a nice auto attack counter that actually got him a little bit of uh, health from his passive as well but still had to blow his flash like juice the uh, juke's the kid can get the advantage in the top lane so far. 16 uh, CS of 12 and has the flash out of Bricks. Both of their teleports are up, so Bricks is going to teleport back to lane. He's already there. But meanwhile, in the bot lane, Rylox, he is down there. Flash from Rootclaw, but exhaust there under Rylox, saving Rootclaw's life. And now Corrin, he's gonna try to get in the mix here as well. Sinestro, he's uh, getting on the front lines. He's just trying to get some auto attacks onto Young Kev. There's a flash from Corrin. Knock up onto Young Kev. First blood over to Sinestro. And now it looks like Demon Cookie may be the next one going down, getting blocked down by the Grasping Roots. And a Piercing Arrow finishing him off. That is a double kill for Sinestro. And that is the synergy uh, that I didn't quite get to yet from uh, Root Claw and Sinestro. You throw down the Grasping Roots, you do have a very clear uh, Piercing Arrow from Sinestro. Yeah, no, I think it was a pretty good uh, little counter rotate right there. You look on the red side, they had a ward down in kind of like the river area right there. and. They, they, they had all the vision possible to kind of set that up, and unfortunately the blue side didn't realize that they were able to get out, and then uh, good kind of rotate right there. Who was that? Is that Rek'Sai that kind of yeah. rotated right there? Yeah, yeah. it was Rek'Sai. So, uh, yeah, positioning really always important in MOBA, like, regardless of which game it is. Like, if you have vision and you have actual people that are crawling out and rotating, like, it usually helps out, so that was nice from State right there. Yeah, that's going to be an interesting uh, interesting point that you just brought well, that is an interesting point you brought up, but an interesting one we should be looking at is that no matter what game you're playing, yeah, the, a lot of these tra skills transfer. Um, I mean, I, I remember whenever Dota first came out, uh, well, Dota 2, I should say, uh, first came out, uh, it was it was heralded as uh, you have to be really, 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 really good at farming, more so compared to League of Legends, but... Um, you can take tr uh, skills from both of them and transfer them to the other game while well, there are some universal skills like of course vision control uh, ganking things like that it's a uh it's, yeah, it's something that, yeah, yeah, like you said, even if you're not familiar with League of Legends, you can still tell what happened because um, it's, it's a universal skill. And yeah, the rotation in the bot lane, the counter gank from Corrin, very nicely played. And uh, Sinestro, he's already got two kills. He has his uh, 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 Tear of the Goddess along with his Dirk, uh, Serrated Dirk. So it's quite a bit of power. It's, uh, it's, it's I mean, of course, the... The tier doesn't really add any power, but it will keep him throwing out those piercing arrows, which is one of the banes of a Varus bot lane, especially if you're on the defensive part of it. You're, uh, you run out of mana quite fast. But in the mid lane, there's a charm lane on a clear space. The exhaust gets thrown down onto him, but it's not enough. He still goes down. Clear space. Uh, uh, being taken down by the old, uh, old the beast. That's going to be interesting. I'm just going to. Oh, old the best. Sorry about that. It's going to be interesting to interesting one to say, but. It is it may. Both summoners down for old the best. He did get a kill in the end. Well, yeah, this is going to be a good little lead for uh, looks like State right now with Ari getting level yeah. six, getting an early kill. Camille's actually keeping pretty good pace. It looks like in top lane as well. <laughs> no, we're having our uh, Malka not not have exactly a great time out there. He keeps seeing a lot of those auto attacks as I was seeing and had to back on out and heal. So a little bit of an early farm lead, a little bit of a gold lead for State. How how can they use this to like a bit of an advantage into sort of the early mid game? Well, you see, Corrin, he's going to start roaming down to the bot lane. Is the, the bot lane's pretty far ahead. If he can get a good gank on that bot lane, he can start taking the dragons. The dragons are going to be very important as this game goes on. And that's, I mean, that's really with any game, especially with the Ocean Drake, because the more you back up and the, uh, the more sustain you're going to have. As when you're out of combat with the Ocean Drake, you do regen your health and your uh, your mana. So we're going to see Corrin come down here, try to boost that lead even more. He does not have a flash. You see, he's going to go down pretty much instantly. Young Kev going down as well. So that's a very clean gank in the bot lane. Sinestro not picking up either of those kills, but he does get two assists. Root, root claw and Corrin getting up both of those. And now I suspect they're either going to take the turret and rotate to, bear, uh, to the dragon. Or, uh, well, top lane, top lane. Yeah, oh. Top lane. Droops, Woo! Uh, Oops, a kid has to flash out of there, and looks like Bricks may have gotten an item advantage over uh, Oops, a kid here. Or he was also fighting in the uh, in the minions oh, here. Hold on, Rylox jumping over the wall into. Uh, into Jupes a kid. That is a kill for Bricks. That's exactly what he needed. He's going to get a much needed relief in the top lane. But down in the bot lane, first turret of the game does fall, and that means first turret gold goes over over to Georgia State. Won't be too bad though. It looks like they're still going to trade out towers. Top lane's going to be taken down for uh, looks like southern side as well. But 
Yeah, they gotta be a little bit careful. Losing that bottom tower, that's kind of a little bit of an aggro spot where everybody's starting to run around, and it's good to see some of the wards popping up right now from them. Uh, just in general, just to talk about the kind of conference in the division, they, they're in a really interesting division where there was LSU who's already lost one. Well, they've lost one game, but there are also three wins up there, three and one sitting in uh, third place technically with these two undefeated still. Central Arkansas, two and three. Texas A&M at Kingsville, one and three. And then they're part of, uh, if you remember this little bit of a controversy that we had about a week and a half ago, South Carolina right. was in their division, but... Uh, due to them using illegal ringers uh, in the game, they got disqualified and uh, had to forfeit all of their matches 0-5 for the season. So uh, congrats to everybody that actually played them and already had a win. <laughs> but uh, yeah, every, everybody that hasn't had a chance to do so it gets a free win basically as well. Uh, good, good reminder for any CSL team as well. Don't use ringers. Don't use illegal players. Right. Jeez. Yeah, I actually mentioned that earlier in our first UL Weekly. Yeah, just don't use ringers. There's a couple of teams that's, been, that's actually done that. But... But beat is a damage done. Uh, can't get disqualified if you use Ringer. But in the top lane, speaking of damage done, ultimate thrown down by Jukes that can and Bricks. He cannot go anywhere. You see the the wall just you cannot get out of that wall from Camille whenever she throws down her alt. So once you're in there, you're stuck. But Bricks, he's a uh, He's tanky enough to be able to withstand that big, uh, that onslaught from Jupsa Kid, and he does have quite a bit of sustain. He's chucking the corruption post as, uh, as well as using his passive uh, to auto attack and get the uh, to get the health back as well. And Jupsa Kid doesn't really have too much in the way of a sustain like Bricks does. So just to go back, does have to teleport. Or Actually, doesn't have to exactly the. Uh, Turret is missing, but meanwhile, Georgia State can Drake. take advantage and take up the first dragon in the game. Do you, do you call it dragon or do you call it Drake? Uh, uh, that's, that's so hold on, technically, okay, so it says dragon on the screen, but that's technically a Drake because the elder dragon is the father dragon. Drakes are actually baby dragons, and the Drakes are the heralds of the actual elder Drake, uh, elder dragon. So technically, it's a Drake, but they call it dragon on the screen, and it's called Drake. I think in the game. Uh, you know, <laughs> for me, for me, it's good either way. I'm like Dragon Baron Drake. I'm like Roshan. We got it all. Like we're good. <laughs> yeah, they they use them interchangeably. Uh, technically, it's not interchangeable. You know, if you want to get real down to the English use of it or the the word, the dictionary use of it, but they use them interchangeably in game. Fun well, fact. five one lead. Five one lead right now. Ten minutes in. Not exactly bloodbathy tier as we've seen in the past a couple times uh, in the CSL as of late, but. Pretty good pacing right now, currently out of the state, and their farm is pretty good. But honestly, they're not like that far ahead. Only what three k goal difference right now? It's not a huge, huge lead for them, is it? No, not not yet. Not yet. I mean, it's still early. Uh, the game can still swing either way. Turrets are evened up. Uh, the dragon, of course, in the first dragon did go over to Georgia State, but uh, it's not out of control. It, they, Georgia State, they uh, seem to have more cohesion with their ganks, with their teammates, uh, just in general. So, but. Um, yeah, games can turn on a diamond during any team fight in the middle, uh, middle part of this game. So we're gonna see how it turns out. It's not lost uh, any, by any means by uh, uh, Southern, uh, yeah, Southern Georgia here, or Georgia Southern, I should say. So. Oh, oh could we have a uh, Camille up top, maybe? Uh, oh, juice. We have a gank coming up there. Rufa, he's going up top, and Bricks might be in trouble, but he's spotted out by the ward, and that's actually just uh, the control ward. So we're gonna take that one out. And call today. Rift Herald is still available if they want to try to take that one, but it looks like there's going to be a four-man gank in the top lane by Georgia State. They want this turret. Rylox is there as well. And now it's like Young Kev making his way to the top lane. It's going to be a 3v4, but it's going to be underneath a southern turret here. They have the minions on the side of Georgia State. Well, they got everybody rotating too as yeah. well. Looks like this, this, this could be really bad if they go deep into it. Ooh, Ash Arrow misses. Uh, Curse line there, that's not good. That would have been a that would probably prompted a flash from Young Kev. Flash in Nether Grafts is what they, it is the engage they want, but they don't want to be in a vicarious situation where they more than likely die. 3v4 turning into a 4v2 is not ever going to be good. You have to be able to burst somebody down, and I don't think they have the power in the top lane for Southern to burst anybody down in the Nether Grafts. So, so going to Oh shoot, down. they're going for it. Yeah, there's chains of corruption being thrown down. Sinestro picking a back kill and absorbs a little bit of those turret shots. Young Kev has to flash out after he uses his nether grass, and now Jutsu Kid has his ult, uses it, destroys Young Kev. Actually, Rootpaw picked up that one, so everything going to the way of Georgia State in that top lane, and now they're going to pick up the top lane turret as well. Yeah, that's brutal. Uh, good, good play underneath, too, as well. Not everybody's just walking straight through the turret, so I'm walking through kind of like the jungle area to jump on him. It really caught him off guard right there. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like he caught him really off guard. He's yeah. just like, wait, there, and, then there's, and then there's four? 
I'm sorry. Yeah, no, it's just like, and then and then there's more. Just hero, uh, sorry, oh. champs just jumping out at him. Like, yeah, yeah, there's that. Yeah, it was a bad situation for anyone else on the side there. But, um, and yeah, Ari was not in that. Like I said, it wasn't. Uh, was it, I think a three v four possible. I, I don't remember if anyone. Uh, I don't think Doobie Cookie got to the top lane. Neither did Clear Space. So, and uh, it might have been a little bit different if it had all the four members versus four members in the top lane along with that turret. But it didn't start out too well. Bricks was getting chunked down quite a bit, especially by Root Claw. Root Claw. So Root Claw Zyra. Zyra support. It's actually one of the most powerful supports in the game as far as just raw damage. And uh, you, you saw that in the top lane pretty well. I mean, she's able to throw out plants and just chuck down Bricks, who's the, the supposed to be the tank, but has no magic resist because he's going against Camille. So a lot of uh, a lot of power, a lot of damage has got through just, just from Root Claw alone. And that's something he has to think about because there's Root Claw and Old the Best on the uh, Zyra and Ari respectively. And like I said, he's not building any magic resist yet. In fact, he didn't even take Merc Treads. He took a Ninja Tab Eye, so... Well, should, should, it be a, should it be a general thing that like the whole entire team should be building up to as well for the magic resist just because there's so much output out of it uh, yeah. from the other team? Yeah, well, that, that, that's, that's the problem, because Camille has a lot of output, too, being an AD champion, and not to mention the AD assassin champion, so uh, you kind of have to split it, and I understand where Bricks is coming from, but at the same time... Because uh, you're building against who your lane mate is. At the same time, I think Mark Trance would have been a little bit better considering how many how many lockdown CCs you have on the side of Georgia State. Um, but yeah, eventually he's going to want to have to build out uh, uh, Spirit Massage and something else to give himself a little bit of magic resist. And uh, Kha'Zix, Rylex building... Oh man, another arrow! Oh, but there's a charm laying out of bricks! Turtle Thrones drop down, he flashes out, but the Sinestro, uh, Soul Shri uh, I'm sorry, Change of Corruption, able to pick up that kill, so Bricks is just not having a good time anytime he tries to be a frontline for his team. Yeah, the, the, exactly what we were talking about, the, like, not having magic results. He just got bursted down new from long... <laughs> From long range, feel bad for the guy who kind of got rooted in there. But this is this is just, this is just some of the confidence right here from uh, State right here. I think they're going to be able to take the t uh, tier two if they want to. Uh, just stay, like we were talking about, both these teams are undefeated, and the team that loses this will be tied up three one with LSU. So it's uh it's it's there's quite a bit of stake at this at this game because uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Daniel. Only the top two teams and divisions advance, correct? Yeah, for for the most part, unless something like weird happens where we have some weird forfeits or some additional DQs, it should be the top two. So right here, this is definitely most likely a number one seed match right now. I would right. have to say, and then uh, we'll have to look at tiebreakers and everything else for the person who, who loses uh, with LSU to see oh. if they're going to be able to go there. But here we go. Oh, the, the clear space just got exploded. Loaded, uh, young Kev going down too. That was a nice charm onto Rylex. That actually took Rylex completely out of that equation. So Clear Space had little defense besides an exhaust, which he did not use either. Uh, he was, uh, he, did, he didn't, wasn't able to splash his jiggle to his head, or uh, grasping him. Sorry about that. We didn't keep him down long enough. That was a very, very nice charm landed on a Rylox and opened up clear space for a huge amount of damage. So, second dragon of the game as a result going over to Georgia State. That is the Mountain Drake, which is, uh, allows them to take, uh, take the epic monsters and the turrets just a little bit faster. And Perfect time as well, yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, no, it's great because now that you have so many kills, you, you don't win the game by kills, you win the game by taking objectives. And yeah, perfect timing because they got the kills, which means they have the arsenal to push as much as they want. And whenever you push, you want to poke down those turrets, and you want to poke as much as possible, as effectively as possible. Mountain Drake helps that like none other. And we were talking about uh, uh, t possible tiebreakers. Yeah, that's uh, you, yeah. This game is definitely for, uh, the first seed essentially, and it's. It, it, I mean, the loser they have to really think about how they're going to approach the uh, the game against LSU, or at least um, the next games coming into the uh, into their division, because LSU could take the second seed and. Obviously, you don't want that because then you're out of the tournament. So this is a pretty high stakes game for either team. Well, we're go we're going into live stats right now, and it looks like uh, we have Georgia. Actually, already Louisiana State. It looks like has lost to Georgia State. So Georgia State's already beat LSU. Okay. Georgia Southern still has yet to play them in Week Five. So this is really important for Georgia Southern in this game right here. If they win, they at least have a chance to cause some kind of wacky three way tiebreaker. Uh, but if they lose here, uh, they could maybe fall into a little bit of a second place trap with LSU. But we'll have to see. Yeah, they right, right, right now, right now it's just it's good. It's good for Georgia State. Right now, it's really good for Georgia State. Yeah, everything's good for Georgia State. The game and the stats right now. But hold on, Sinestro, he is locked down with another grasp, and he finally gets shut down. Rylox 
sneaking in there, picking up that kill. Pick it up. Oh, this actually might go in the way of Georgia Southern, but all the best is there. Has a lot of power to work with. Clear space in the back lines, firing as much as possible. But now it's a 2v3 that did not go in the favor of Georgia Southern in the end here. Drix is running the wrong way. He is going to die. It's just a matter of time. And who picks it up? Dupsa kid picking Brutal. up that one. Four. For I, I I feel really bad for Brix right there. He yeah. he threw down. He threw down. Uh, what was it? The vengeful. Uh, what's what's his all called again? Good job. He threw. He uh, yeah. I was trying to remember. He he threw it down. He had three. Uh, he had three players in it too as well. And just uh, the team was too distracted fighting. Uh, some of the other parts of <laughs> Georgia yeah. State right there, unfortunately. Yeah, his, his ultimate, I mean, yeah, it does the explosion, but it's not a huge offensive ability. Mostly you want to keep your allies inside of it because it does damage reduction. And uh, it's just not enough. There's so much damage on the side of Georgia State between Camille, between Ari, between Rude Claw, uh, Rude Claw Zyra. Uh, those are just three huge amount of uh, uh, damages. But then you have Sinestro in the back line who is pretty fed right now. 5-1-6 and six at 144 CS, second highest in the game. And also, uh, actually has the most gold in the game, despite the low CS, because he's making up for it in kills and assists. So has quite a bit of arsenal behind his, uh, his piercing arrows, which is his main damage source. And if anyone gets close to him, like Bricks, he can actually dish out a huge amount of damage still, due to his, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, due to his, uh, his procking of his W, which does percent health damage against high and, it, and against high uh, health champions like Maokai. It's actually pretty damaging after a while. Well, up top, Bricks might be in a little bit of trouble. He's all by himself right now. The jokes are uh, well, <laughs> continuing to bully him a bit here. We'll force him back. Oh, yeah. no, at least no kill there. And Camille is extremely mobile. He can leap around and jump over walls pretty, uh, pretty easily and dish out a lot of damage in the end. We've seen it multiple times. Go down the box, but hold on. Oh! Hold the best. It, did it. it connected. It did connect. Nethergrass is going to root him down, but he still gets out. Actually, needs the flash and the spirit rush to get out. He tries to go back in. Don't do that. I'm like, look at the balls on this man. Absolutely, he's throwing them around. Orbs and deceptions, they are balls. And uh, spear rushes, they <laughs> technically do come in kind of spherical uh, forms. So, no, you're uh, you're quite right. Um, uh, turns not we'll, we'll, there. We'll, we'll, we'll leave it at that. We'll leave it at that. Yeah. So, no one dying, but a lot invested into old the best, and he just goes back and uh, goes back and gonna make his way back to the mid lane where. Bricks might be in trouble again. And uh, in the top lane, Bricks cannot withstand Jupes the Kid's onslaught here. Uh, I think this time he's locked in. Yeah, he's uh, locked in. And... Oh, he actually might get out. Oh, Wait. yeah. You, you see, I told you he's so mobile, though, as a Camille. But now, Rylox is in. Isolation is going to be able to bring him down. Jupes the Kid bit off a little bit more he can chew. Overstayed just a little much there. Corin tried to get in there. But while they, uh, because they had to shift their attention to uh, top lane, Georgia State able to pick up that inner mid lane turret that he's seen. It was beautiful. Really good rotation right there to defend Bricks. I would have felt bad for him if he just got picked You've off like that. Been feeling bad for him all game. Yeah, I've been feeling bad for him all game. But it looks like uh, State's <laughs> rotating down to the bottom. They, they're probably going to be able to get this tier two really quick as well. Yeah, so next uh, which... is there. He's going to be able to take it. Yeah, that it's going down so fast with the, with the uh, mountains right there on their side as well. That yeah, didn't really stand much of a chance, and there wasn't any defense on the side of Georgia Southern either. Now it looks like Georgia State. They're just going to go back recuperate because. Daniel, there is a dragon in 30 seconds. There is a dragon in 30 seconds. Uh, the other one, it's uh, Baron, right? Baron's up it already. Baron right? Nasher, the exalted one. Which one would you tell them to go for? Like, it's strategized wise, like, with one coming up in 30 seconds, the other one is up already. Would you tell them to go for it now? Well, Who just warded it, too, as well? Was that Southern that just warded it? Yeah, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's Southern that warded it, and they're going to probably counter ward it as uh, Jupsa Kid is up there, though. Uh, it does have uh, still the warding totem. Still holding on to it, though. Yeah, here, comes, uh, here comes the pings. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, this is the thing, Jupsa Kid wants to, is going to just try to split push. Though. They're going to go for the Dragon because you don't want to go for a Baron. Even when you're this far ahead, you still don't want to go for a Baron when there's five members of the enemy team up. That can still be a disastrous for your team. That's how throws happen. So they're just going to play it cool. The Mountain Drake is up. That's actually, if they get the second one, that means that the uh, Baron is going to go down even faster along with these turrets also. So it's uh, advantageous to, for Georgia State to get the second uh, uh, Mountain Drake in order to... Uh, catch uh, Southern off guard or shove into their base long enough to where they have to stay in their base to defend against minions and then go get Baron the Exalted One because it's going to go down extremely fast with these two Mountain Drakes. 
Yeah, this is going to definitely put them on the back. They, they, they're probably going to have to catch them. If they do go for Baron, they're going to have to catch them inside Baron. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, so, I mean, that, yeah. that, might be their last, that might be their last option. Yeah, and sometimes it is a desperation maneuver. That's why you... Hold on, Trips again. He's caught out once again and isolated once again. And Rylox, if you're isolated against the Kha'Zix... Run! You're not run. going to make it out, but he actually oh. does. But Luclaw, he gets locked down with the Nevergrass, but there's no power behind it. So he's actually able to flash out with quite a bit of health left. And one piercing arrow just took out almost half of young Kev's health. That's why you do not want to fight a Fed, uh, or at least get hit by Fed. Uh, check out, check out bottom line. Look at, look, at the, uh, look at all the best, man. He's a, maybe looking to rat out the bottom tower. Yeah, I mean, they're doing a 1-3-1 uh, one, one split push right now, and that's bringing a lot of pressure onto Georgia Southern. They're having trouble reacting to this one. And this is uh, exactly what they want. They want to land piercing arrows just like that, drive anyone they can out of the way. And now young Kev uh, trying to get into his base while Corrin Cuts him off, it takes quite a bit of damage for his efforts there, so just be careful. You're not invincible, you are fed though. Bottom's going down, bottom's going down. Yeah, bottom is going down. Yeah, Georgia Southern, they don't have the power to withstand this 3-1-3 split push. And Georgia, uh, Georgia State, they know this. They're just going to keep on and keep it on here, try to get an inhibitor and then more this is, Yeah, this is rough, because they want to react to the inhibitor down bottom, but that's going to open up the mid tower. That goes down now top, so but if they wanted to take that as well. Um, big chess game right now. Like, yeah, it looks like Georgia State, they're finally going to go in, but the base is busted open. These piercing arrows, they're so vicious, and Sinestro has plenty of mana to back them up, too. Now yeah, they're still there. Never mind, he's still going to throw them out. So it looks like there's not too much. Hold on, there is a chance of crystalline arrow on to Rootclaw. He's going to go down after the locked down with the twisted advance. And now, just the jutsu again. The back lines as well going down, so that's two picked off by Georgia Southern. That's exactly what they needed, prompting Georgia State to back off, and that gives Georgia Southern a little bit of breathing room. Yeah, it might actually even open up Baron for them if they really wanted to go for it. Though they obviously should try to check it out just in case they might have rotated over there, anyways. But uh, still, two towers down though. So next time they push on through, they're gonna have uh, with full abilities might have a little bit more opportunity to tag on those inhibitors or maybe even go for top lane. But yeah, it's uh, still looking a little rough for Southern. Yeah, no, that was a window for uh, for them, just for breathing room. They uh, they don't have the resources to go for Baron just yet, and uh, Corrin, even, uh, even going back to base, you always have to be afraid of a Rek'Sai and where she's going to go with her ultimate, but she can teleport to anywhere on the map that her, bait, her uh, tunnels are at. So, uh, and, and, and being a higher level at the time, uh, for then uh, Rylox does have the smite advantage if he was able to get back into that Baron pit, but uh, Rylox decided to stay in the base, just clear out minions, gonna shove those as far as possible and create a little bit of pressure because they know the Baron is gonna be taken pretty soon, or at least started. Corin getting chunked out a little bit, eats those honeydew fruits, just going to heal back up, no problem. They also do have one ocean drink so they can remain rested and stay healthy. Oh, this is an interesting moment right here. We got yeah. kind of the players in jungle. We got an uh, is that Camille in bottom? That's Camille in bottom. Uh, so they got to be really careful here how they split up. Looks like they're setting some of the defenses down south. They noticed him. Oh, that oh, could have been a good opportunity, but that's going to open up Baron. It looks like yeah, three of them down bottom. That more than likely would open up Baron. Are they going to start? And they do. Georgia State. They don't waste any time. Junkhead is there, throws the board in the pit, he knows it's happening, they're going to try to chunk it down as fast as possible. Rix is going to teleport down there, meanwhile Jukesa Kid able to completely take out Tima Cookie there. But hold on, Rylox is in the Baron pit, who picks it up? It's going to be Georgia State, and now the power is in their favor, even more so than it used to be. Old the best, picking up Young Kev and in pursuit, getting a double kill onto Clear Space. Rylox the only one left, Georgia State, they're looking to shove this one out now. Yeah, poor, poor, poor Clear Space is just throwing out flares, trying to defend like, <laughs> any damage you possibly can, just trying to get the hell out of there, wasn't able to, but yeah, this doesn't look good, this is going to be an easy push through mid, probably all the way through, oh, Rylox yeah. by himself is not going to be able to defend this, unfortunately, in the timer, a little bit too much for them as well, they're going to lose at least a minimum of two inhibitors, at yeah. least. They do have empowered minions in the base, they're just going to go straight forward, Jimmy is up, Young Kev is up now too, Rick's in clear space will be up in 10 seconds, with two Nexus Towers down, all they need is the Nexus itself. Demon could be going down, and that was one of the They're things. Focus firing it. They could just destroy whoever comes out, and that is game number one of this best of three going over to Georgia State. 20 to 7. 10 turns to 157.1k to 40.7k, Daniel. Beautiful performance, beautiful performance from Georgia State. A lot of, uh, I want to say, good pacing, really good pacing. 
very small, like played the small game early, got towers, got objectives, got a kill here, got a kill there, ganked, rotated. Then eventually as they got bigger, picked up bigger objectives, dragons, and then eventually were able to just push and overwhelm everybody down. But I think I think as well, as you mentioned, I think it was just some of the ability to burst uh, Southern's champs down. I think just they didn't have enough magic resistance. You just watch every team fight and they're just getting just blown up. <laughs> yeah. Every single time. I mean, at least, at least from what I got out of it. That's one of the disadvantages of playing a tank and in a losing lane because you have to build against your lane opponent. While meanwhile, the enemy team might have. I mean, that would have been a great build by Bricks if there was, maybe, say, a Jace in the mid lane or a, 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 a tankier support in the bot lane that didn't dish out a huge amount of magic damage, almost comparable to Old the Best's Ari. Uh, but it, that wasn't the case. Uh, Georgia State, they had uh, two massive AD damage dealers and two massive AP damage dealers, and that is just really hard. Uh, unless you're snowballing, that is really hard to build against. Yeah, really there. Well, guys, that is game one in the books going to State. We're going to be heading to game two. As This is a best of three. I did see some questions in the chat. This is a best of three. We're in week number four out of five weeks of the regular season. And SmackDown right after that, we got playoffs coming up. So you guys, if you guys aren't familiar with our ULAW system, uh, we do broadcast every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Pacific. And as well, also one additional bonus broadcast on Saturdays at 12 p.m. Pacific, which I absolutely hate because <laughs> I have to wake up so much earlier. <laughs> I have to wake up so much earlier every every single day. I'm like, I'm like, why is my Saturday the worst day of the week? I'm like, I'm thinking about, oh yeah, I'm like we have League of Legends in the morning. I'm like, damn it, I'm like, why can't we have everything in the, the evening? Best way again? to wake up for me. I, I know, I know, right? I'm like, get get my coffee. <laughs> Get, get my coffee, wish for a rise mid, man. That's, that's, that's how I get going. Um, but we're going to be, I think, right back here in a couple minutes after we get the Game 2 lobby set up. Uh, any words before we head out to break? Uh, no, it's uh, best of three, so uh, we're going to see how the pick and ban phase goes between Georgia State and Georgia Southern. I think Georgia State can pretty much stay status quo uh, because Georgia Southern, they really didn't have anything on the comp that, was hap that they went up against. So it's up to them to react to this and to try to... Uh, uh, try to better themselves in the pick and ban phase going into game number three, but uh, game number two, I should say. But um, yeah, we're gonna get into it. So stick around. We'll be right back. Only fourteen ninety nine. Don't miss the call. Download Band. Communication made easy. 